Alléluia. We bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I was upstairs and I was uh, praying along with everybody, listening. And Pastor Martin prayed something. He prayed, he said, that the devil attacks your spirit to discourage you, to make you heavy, to make you disappointed. So that the things of God becomes like a burden. Hallelujah. And then he prayed another prayer and he said that we ought to pray to ask God to send us our destiny helper. You know, I was listening and I say, this is the Spirit of God speaking. The work of the prophet has already worked in him and started, hallelujah. Because that's the word that God has given me for today. And as I was coming, God used him to speak it ahead of time. And then he goes along and he said, sometimes you pray for a destiny helper. And in your mind, you have somebody that you already, but that's not how God works. He can use random people. And he went ahead saying, you see, the priest was supposed to help the Samaritan. Meaning, the one who's supposed to follow God, the one who knows God, the one who understands the ways of God, the one who supposed to understand he's supposed to help you doesn't work and then comes a Levite who is appointed in the work in the house of God he comes also he sees the beat up man and he passes by ha! and comes somebody that was not expected because between them and the Jew, there was something different. Come somebody who's a Samaritan and then sees a person, steps in, pick him up, and goes to bring him relief to the place. And I was listening. Say, God, today, let my destiny helper not miss me. Put your hand on your head. Lord, today, let my destiny helper not miss me. Pray again. Lord, Today, even now, let my destiny helper locate me. Hallelujah. Listen, people of God. The destiny helper helps you at every side of your life. Because he gives you one key that opens the main door for the entire, uh, I would say that, castle. All you need is the key for the main door of the entire castle. Once you get in, hallelujah, hallelujah, once you get in, there is no way there is, oh, Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, let me get the key of the main door. Of the main door. Unlock it for me.
I need spiritual key. I need emotional key. I need finances key. I need marital key. I need parental key. I need business key. I need church key, ministry key. I need, I need, I need that key. I need that key. All I need is that key. Ah, say, Lord, let my destiny helper locate me now, 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 in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you see, when you toil and then you toil and then you work and then you press and then you toil and all you see is frustration, it means you may be on the right path, but like Moses, the burden might be too heavy. He was on the right path to the destiny, he was on the right path to the promise, but the burden was too heavy. He needed some helper to help him carry the word, the promise, and the plans of God. When Christ Jesus went at Gethsemane at the time of the Passion, the Bible says he kneeled down. He was praying. He turned around. He saw his disciple, disciples and he told them, I want you to pray with me. I have something to do. So he counted of those and on those he trained for three years. They were sleepy. But as he was on the way to the cross, there was a man who was called the man from Siren. A man who did not follow him. A man who, did not, who was not among the twelve. Somebody random who was among the crowd. The Bible said they grabbed that man to carry the cross. Hmm. He trained his own disciples so they can help him carry the ministry. But when the time arrived, they disappear. But you see, God, who is good, he did not give up on them either. Hallelujah. He knew that they had still something, but it was not the time for it to be manifested. But when the time arrived, when the time has arrived, keys in the kingdom are given so I be able to step in exactly the plan of God. So I'm able to step in the purposes of God without missing one. There is no and absolutely none. It makes no sense that I live and I struggle over myself. Are you for what I'm saying? And I turn over myself. And it feels like I go, but I'm still like on the cycle. I, I, I don't see the advancement. But God says, it is appointed a time for a destiny helper. When that destiny helper comes, he, won't look, he, he ain't going to look on your status. He ain't going to look on your social status. He ain't going to look on your political status. He ain't going to know nothing of it. All he will see, he must help you. You see the man, the Samaritan who helped the, the man, he took him, he brought it in the loft, he left him there, he continued. A destiny helper does not sit down with you. He just gets you to your place. Hallelujah. He just gets you in your position, your place. Once he has gotten you there, all the wounds of life will be taken care of. 
all the wounds of life will be taken care of. And every year that the canker worm have stolen, God shall restore them. God shall restore them. Even though the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, this is only because he is set to make me see the glory of God. Let me explain. When he comes to steal, if, if, if he doesn't steal, how would I know that God is able to restore? Amen? If he doesn't kill, how do I know that God is able to resurrect? If he doesn't destroy, how do I know that God is able to rebuild? <laughs> In some ways, in some ways, even the devil is a destiny helper. <laughs> because the Bible says, the plans of the enemy, the plans of the devil that they have thought for evil, they manufactured a plan from the devil so that they, they will do evil to Joseph. The Bible says, that was a destiny helper of Joseph. <laughs> So you look at your trials, you look at your difficulties, and then you feel like you are stepping back. You feel like you are still being held back. You feel like you are being, being pulled back. But God says, the more you are pulling on, the more your muscle getting higher. <laughs> Hallelujah. The muscles, your, your spiritual muscles, Because you got to come to a place where you no longer pray with goosebumps, but you pray with faith. Hallelujah. Because so many of us, we were, we were, we were trained to pray with goosebumps. When you pray and then you feel like your flesh is becoming like a chicken. And you're like, oh, I, saw, I feel the Holy Ghost. Uh -uh. It's by faith. <laughs> because the day you don't feel the goosebump, it does not mean that God is not there. <laughs> So God is training you so you will start now walking by and not by. And then at that time, you are oh Jesus Christ. You will be able to say, thus said the Lord. I came to untie the colt that was bound at the crossroad. For the Lord Jesus has sent me. He said, when you go, you will find a colt, the little of the donkey, tied down at the crossroad. When you go, untie the colt and bring it to me. Don't even ask permission. When God sends a destiny helper, he won't ask permission to help you. <laughs> Hallelujah. He will pick you up and drop you where you are supposed to arrive. And the Lord Jesus said, if any man asks you, why are you untying the colt? You shall say, the Lord has need of it. See, the Lord has need of your life. The Lord has need of your voice. The Lord has need of your hands and your feet. When I was in my past, I used my mouth to just talk to ladies and then uh, in French we say, break les femmes. Come on, D. <laughs> Hallelujah. When I was in my past, I used my mouth to, to eh? no, no, like to try to seduce ladies. 
convince the ladies no you are pretty oh no you know and the body do so that math huh? a player but i did not know that god gave me that math to speak his kingdom i did not know he gave me that math to release revelation i did not know he gave me that math to proclaim his glory so i used the tool of god in the wrong way but the day the destiny helper arrived ha, i ended up in jail <laughs> That's where my destiny helper sent me. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, she was my destiny helper. She got me good. It was back then. She got me good and then made sure that I will rot in jail. And myself, I asked myself, I, I said, Lord, can somebody be wicked like this? I couldn't believe that somebody can look at you, lie on you, and then want you to be dead. Like, it was, it was not possible to believe that. Then I remember that even the brothers of Joseph, they did the same thing. <laughs> Sometimes we read the Bible, we see what they do. We don't think that the people in this life can do that. They are wicked people around though. <laughs> the Bible says that the wicked sits and devise mischief. He calculates how he's gonna make you hurt. But it was a time when God was setting my path to be set free, to be delivered of myself and the world. When I came out of there, and then you say, brother, hey, sin over there. I say, bye-bye. <laughs> That's why I always say that you got to come to a place where you hate sin. Because you see, sin makes you be dumb. Like stupid. Sin makes you do stupid and dumb stuff. And then when you look back, and you're like, why in the world did I do that? <laughs> Are you what I'm saying? But I can tell you, there is a day that the Lord will send the person, whosoever the person is, whether a brother, whether a sister, whether a parent, whether a stranger, whether your adversary, hallelujah, whosoever, God is able to use anything anytime anywhere any hour the bible says that the enemies of israel were also the destiny helper of israel <laughs> hallelujah they were trying to hold israel in egypt but the day the day arrived say when the day of my day has arrived when the day of my day has arrived. Hallelujah. The Bible says, those who were holding them captive, those who were holding them down, they say, hey, this is gold. This is money. This is silver. Take yourself and go out of this place. Please get out with everything you want. Take it and go. You see, let me explain this. It's like in an auction. When you do auction, right? You give the best price for something. And then you say this price, you say that price. The other one said, the, I, I, you know what I'm saying? Until the highest price gets, beats, right? What God was doing with the devil, with Pharaoh, was to be the higher price. He be the first plague. <laughs> the devil say, oh, I can't do that. God say, okay, I'm going to be the second one. <laughs> the devil say, oh, that's not, that's not. Uh. He be down till the 10th. At 
the tenth one, when he beat, <laughs> it was gold, <laughs> silver. <laughs> it was everything. I, I what I'm saying. Because if they had gone out the first day, they would have gone out with only spoon and forks. Say revelation. You thought that you were being held by your enemy. But God was increasing the amount of your insurance. Because when payday comes back, every dime, every dime that the enemy has held against you, from you, will be calculated and multiplied by seven. For you are called to multiply, not to add. You are not called to add on. You are called to multiply from thereof. So the attack of the enemy, the adversity of the enemy, whatsoever that enemy is, whether somebody that the devil is using, whether principalities, whether rule of darkness, whatever that is, there is a day of reckoning. There is a day when God will say, Now, enough is enough. I will show myself glorious and powerful. We were here and suddenly we received a letter from what they call the HOA to tell us that we cannot pray, that we cannot have church. They sent us lawyers against us. I took the letter, I put it at the altar, I worked on it prophetically. And I said, Lord, you're going to take care of it. And in those days, what God did is that he connected us to one of the guys who was directly in charge of all the religious affairs in the White House. And he was also in charge with all the religious affairs in the United States, no, United Nations. And then when he stepped in our plate, all the lawyers who were against us, they start begging for release. <laughs> they said, please pray like you want. Pray when you want. Please just do your thing. And they ended up even changing their principles and policies. There is a time when God says, the help that he has designed, the help he has designed, is called the Tikvah in Hebrew. Tikvah. It's like a rope. It's like a thread. That thread takes you from here and carry you in your future. In the book of Joshua chapter 2, let's get in the word. Joshua chapter 2, we're going to read from verse 15. Joshua chapter 2, starting from verse 15. Mm -hmm. Then she let them down by a cord from now, the window. When you read the word of God in Joshua, does this story talks about who? The spies that who sent? Joshua sent where? To Jericho. They arrived at Jericho, and they were, they were caught, actually. And they were being pursued in order to be seized. So they entered in the house of a lady, and that lady happened to be a prostitute. But they entered the house, and she sees them. She knows they are the enemy of Jericho. She is not from Israel. She's from Jericho. But when they enter into that house... She is prompted to help them. And, and she said, because 
I have already perceived that you're going to take over this city. Hallelujah. So I ain't going to go to just trash you or just uh, uh, prevent you. So she helped them. So in verse 15, what she did, she took a cord. That word for cord is called kibel. Okay, in Hebrew, kibel. Kibel simply means a ride, a, I mean a, 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 a cord, a, a, a line, a rope. But that's not the same cord I'm talking about. This one was only to get the people out from the window. But there is another cord that was to get her out from the... Are you reading? Verse, verse 15. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. Then she led them down by a cord through the window. Uh -huh. For her house was upon the town wall. Mm -hmm. And she dwelt upon the wall. Verse 16. And she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourself there three days, until the pursuers be returned. And afterward may he go your way. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of okay. the scarlet thread. He gives unto her, now what we call it, tick vow. That word here for line, which is also translated cord or thread, in Hebrew is tick vow. The same word is found in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 to 13. When God says, I know the plans and the thought I have for you to give you a hope and a future. The word over there, hope, is tigval. It's the same exact word that is being used right here in the verse 18 when it tells them, it tells her, take this tigval. Hallelujah. Now, notice something. There was a kibel, which is the first road, cord, that she gave to them so that we'll escape from the window. But she, they say, in return, we give you another one. That is hope. That is to bring you in your future. When you read a story, you realize that the, at that time, when they came back and they took over, when they saw that thick vow, that thread, they didn't attack the house. And because of that specific little scarlet red line that she has hang on a door, on a window, because of that, she herself and her parents and family lived and they were able to enter Israel. Hallelujah. Bring it back again. the TV please push on the TV turn on the TV hallelujah go ahead go ahead read from verse 18 continue verse 18 behold when we come into the land thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou behold when we come into the land thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window where you yeah, go to continue um Tread in the window which thou didst let us down by, mm -hmm. and thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother mm -hmm. and thy brethren and all thy father's household mm -hmm. home unto thee. Mm. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head, and we will be guiltless. And Whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. And if thou utter this our business, then we will be quit of thine oath, which thou hast made us to swear. And she said, According unto your words, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed 
and she bound the scarlet line in the window. Now let me break it down for you. As I said, there are two words. In verse 15, you have a kibel, which is cord also. And then in verse 18, you have what? Tigval. That means what? Cord and hope. They tell her, listen, we're going to give you this. And what we're going to give you when we come back and we see it, we will make sure that we take you and we bring you into your future. Are you what I'm saying? In the book of Jeremiah, God speaks, chapter 29, from verse 11. Can we read? Jeremiah chapter 29, from verse 11. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Jeremiah 29 from verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. For I know the conceptions. I know the manufactured plans. I know how I want you to end, to perform, to live, to be. I already planned them. And then those plans that I have towards you continue. It says what? Thought of peace mm -hmm. and not of evil mm. to give you an expected end. God says this. He said, before you enter in your future, you need to have peace. I'll read again. Before you enter your future, you need peace. That lady who was at that place in Jer Jer Joshua 2, she needed to have peace with those people. Before she enter a future. Are you what I'm saying? When God takes you from one place to another place in order to promote you, to elevate you, to build you, before you start, you need peace. Because if your heart is troubled, your vision will be clouded. And then you will start taking decisions that are clouded. Are you following? So it tells her, I mean, the Lord tells, for I know the thoughts. G give me that in a um, uh, amplify, please. Go ahead. For I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you. Say, say, the say, say, for the Lord knows. For the Lord knows the plans, the plans and the thoughts and the thoughts that He has for me. That He has for me. Ay, ay, ay. Oh Jesus. The Lord knows the thoughts and the plans that He has for me. Continue. Says the Lord. Plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. To give you a future and a... That word here, hope, is tigva. The same word that was given to... What's her name? Rahab. Who was Rahab? The prostitute in the book of Joshua, she was also the, the line of Christ, the great, 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 great mother of Jesus Christ. Even in a filthiness, God found purpose. Are you feel what I'm saying? But for her to enter her future, she needed to have first the tigva, the key. She needed to have a destiny helper. That will help her be protected. Are you what I'm saying? She needs to have somebody that will keep her together. So that when the day of deliverance arrives, she will be found well at peace. So she can enter a future. When trouble starts starting all around you. There is only one prayer that you should be doing. Is Lord, 
give me your peace. Listen. When the tempest and the storm were all around the boat, the Lord stepped in. And what did he say? What did he say? Peace. Because you see, in the midst of adversities, in the midst of trials, when God sends your helper or your destiny helper, he needs to find you at the place where God sent him there. When God says, that person, I want you to go help him. But I want the person to be, uh, uh, you will find the person at this portion or at this place. The destiny helper, all he does, he follows the GPS of God. When he arrives, if he doesn't find you, what happened? <laughs> so the reason why you need peace is that so you will not be confused, afraid, scared, and then simply start making decisions and then leave the place where you are supposed to be found. Are you following? So the Lord will give you peace. And then he will provide you a rope. That rope that he provides you is called hope. And hope is the rope for your future. That you hold on. Hallelujah. And that is pulling you towards the destiny where God wants you to be. Which is different from the cord which is Kibel. God does not want you to escape only. He wants you to arrive. Listen. You can escape a threat. You can escape a danger. And still fail to arrive at your destination. Does it make sense? So the Lord says, For I know the plans and thought that I have for you, saith the Lord, plans for peace and well-being, and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Continue. And when he started now giving you that tick vow, that future, that peace, what happened? He says what? Then we... It's, it's only now. after he says, then. You will? Then you will call on me, and you will come and pray to me. And I will hear your <laughs> voice, and I will listen to you. Oh, people, people of God, hallelujah. Yeah. That's why you do not pray out of fear. Before he said it, then you come, and then you pray, and then he listened. He said by giving you peace. The Lord answers what? Prayer of, of faith. But if you don't have peace, it's like the children of Israel when they were before by Haraf. The Bible said they kneeled down, fell down, and started screaming and crying. Oh, Lord, you have brothers who kill us. They were all confused. He said, all you're doing is <laughs> nonsense. Get up and keep on going. When the enemy comes, if you don't have your head together, how would you even detect which way the enemy is at? Because you see, it's the enemy that brings confusion. And the Lord is not the author of confusion. So it will provide you with peace. You see, if you don't have peace from the Lord, it will be impossible for you to start the path. Why? Because you will be like, shall, shall I go here? Shall, shall, hey, no, is it over here? Mm, I think the Lord sent me here. No, I th you are confused. And the time you are taking to figure out, shall I go here? Shall I go here? Shall I go here? Shall I not go here? <laughs> Your destiny helper has already passed. That's why you need to pray, Lord, give me your peace. 
He said, for I will give you my peace. Not according to the world. Continue reading. Then you will call on me and you will come and pray to, to me. And I will hear your voice and I will listen to you. Okay, so is somebody, is somebody hearing this word? I, I, I want you to pay attention because the Lord is speaking. I, I, are, you making, are you paying attention to what he's saying right here? Listen, I always say and I repeat always, the word of God is the consistent, constant will of God that he has for us continually. So when you open, oh Lord Jesus, help us. When you open the mind of God, you must know with certainty that this is what is telling you. If not, you will read it like a novel. You will read it like a, a geographical book. You will read it like a, a story book. And what God is saying at that time, you will miss it. When I was in jail, I knew that I was innocent. But what I knew does not mean that's what also the judge or the DA knew. Are you following what I'm saying? And in jail, I heard that they, they said that everybody is innocent. No, everybody said they're innocent. Even the greatest criminal. <laughs> so they don't know who says the truth. So I was sitting. And as I was praying, God gave me first his peace. So I know exactly which path I need to take. Which position I need to be in. So I was confident that what he says should come to pass. But as he gave me the word and I start consulting with the word of God. Reading the Bible. I'm reading the story of Noah. And I see inside the water subside over the earth for 150 days. Now, you're talking about the story of Noah. That was back then, amen? Many thousand years ago. But as I read it, I heard the Lord speaking to me through that word. And then I told to my cellmate, I said, brother, I'm going to be free in 150 days. He looked at me, he said, you lost it. Because for you to appear even before the judge, that will take at least 365 days, a year full. And then he, they, they, they tried to say something that, you know, I, I, at that time, I was, I, I just arrived in the United States. I, I, I was not really fluent in English. I couldn't speak English. So, uh, in some places like uh, Oklahoma, in some places that they are highly racist, like real. And I remember they look at me and all desire they had in their heart was to make sure that they kick me out of the United States. Whether I'm true or not, whether I'm right or not. And I saw in my own eyes how they put together law. And I thought to myself, I said, how can a government lie? He was shocking. He <laughs> was shocking because, you know, when you come from Africa, you have the, 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 the you think that the United States is the holy, holy, holy land. <laughs> that people are holy. They, they, they cannot do you wrong. <laughs> so, because in Africa, you, you talk about the judge, the judge is corrupted. You talk about the president, the president is corrupted. You talk about the, 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 the lawyer, the lawyer is corrupted. Are you what I'm saying? But so when you talk about United States, you, you think that this is a, where God sits down. <laughs> I was wrong. Anyway, so I see the government planning mischief against me. And, I, and a, a, a sister asked me, she said, but why, why were they doing that? Why were, were they doing that? 
I said, eventually, because he was a devil. Because they don't know me. I have nothing that will interest them. Are you what I'm saying? But when God knows you and wants to use you, the enemy will want to thwart it at the beginning. Even if he has to use all power. Remember Daniel? The Bible that they, they did what? They sat down and they created a law. They passed a law. They voted a bill. <laughs> Only for him. So I tell to the brother, God says, I will get out in 150 days. He look, he said, you mad. You lost it. That's not possible. But you see, the word of God is the consultation for your soul daily. For the Bible says that David consulted with the Lord. How do you do that? Through his mind. So as I was faking in and soaking in to see what God would tell me, he spoke. And from all and against all odds, 149th day, suddenly, somebody say suddenly, <laughs> suddenly they call me and they say, come to the court. It was not my day. It was not the time. It was not plain. It was not program. It was not on the docket of the judge. Suddenly, he wants me to come. I arrive. Nobody say no nothing. Everybody is standing. Nobody, I said nobody say nothing. And they just look at me. Ah, what you doing here? Dismiss. Ah. <laughs> no judgment. No jury. No proof. No case. No nothing. Dismiss. Ah. And I look at the judge. I say, ah. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> because God already said so. And the 150 days I was out. And then myself, I was like, prophet! Hey! I said, ah, you know now. <laughs> now, 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 he was trying to, now he was trying to ask me what God says about him. I said, brother, bye-bye, I'm gone. <laughs> because when I was here, you should have asked me. <laughs> Amen. Now that you see it came to pass, you say, what God say? I'm gone, no. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Destiny helpers. A hope for your future. When they released me, you know, ICE, ICE is called Immigration Custom Enforcement. All they do is to take you and then to ship you. They pack you like Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care whether you come from China or Russia. They just pack you, they ship you. <laughs> Hallelujah. They don't even take the right tip. They just pack you and ship you however. So they come and they say, hey, we're going to ship you. I say, ah, ah. God already said. In the word, the same word, I was reading in Isaiah. And as I was reading, I saw inside, thou shalt not go by flight. But there is only one way to be shipped from here. To Africa, they ship you by flight, not by boat. Back then, they were shipping people by boat. <laughs> but now, it's by flight. So I'm thinking, this is God speaking again. But I need to have peace so that I don't lose my mind. I feel what I'm saying. So I don't, God wants you to have peace. Because it's, you know, in the world, the justice system says, whatever you Say, will be held against you. So if you don't have peace, you will be like, blah, 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 blah. when you finish, they will use the word that you said. You're thinking you are defending yourself, but they will use it against you. Peace. So ice comes, they say they're going to ship me. I say, okay. And they say, where's your passport? Meanwhile, the person who hurt me, she blocked even my passport. She didn't want to give that to me. I said, hey, 
please give that pastor back. No, please, no, please, no. I, I wrote to the judge, please have mercy. Tell her to give at least my passport. The judge said no. I said, ah. <laughs> but I did not know that the day I arrived, if that passport I wanted to have, if I had that in my hand, that same day, they would have shipped me like Amazon. So they were looking for my passport. It was not there. <laughs> and how did that happen? Because I was, I was telling, give my passport. I was writing to the judge. Uh, Your honor, according to the line article of the law, it says so, 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 so. So please, uh, uh, plead for me. Get, get my, uh, my stuff back. I try all I could. It didn't work. And then I was reading the word of God. And I see in the book of Luke. It says, if somebody takes away your belonging, let it go. I said, ah, Jesus. <laughs> but that was the word that spoke to me. And I obey. And that turned out to be my blessing. So when they released me, I saw again in the same word, in the book of Exodus, the Lord told me, and then it says, I will bring you to the place I have prepared for you. So, they released me in the midst of Oklahoma City. All I had was a shoe, like a, 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 a homeless. And, and, and even my jean I came with in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, the, the jail, they stole it. I used those days to buy a very expensive stuff. So, my Gucci uh, uh, belt, they stole the Gucci belt. <laughs> So I came out like, like Abraham. <laughs> Just going somewhere. So they dropped me in the midst of Oklahoma City in the United States of America. The only person I knew was zero, except God. I didn't have a father to call, a mother to call, a friend to call, a nobody. Then... They dropped me. The judge turned even, the Lord turned the heart of the judge. The judge became my lawyer. How? Well, when I arrived before the ice, I was so frustrated that they can be evil, that they can do wrong. So I, I was frustrated. I said, please, ship me. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> Just ship, pack me and ship me. They said, we're going to ship you. So I wrote, wrote a letter to the judge. I said, please, ship me now. He said, but you don't have a passport. <laughs> you know, uh, recently, it was like, what, two months ago or so, or three months, I requested what they call a four-year request to have all the audio of the, the case. And I was listening to them many hours, and I was baffled. I was, whoa. So that's how God himself did. I was, I, I knew, I lived the story. I was there. I saw what happened. But you know, it was one thing that uh, 10 years after, I, I, have, I have those audio and I'm listening and I'm seeing how God was manif ma ma manifesting and organizing everything. The procurer the, of the Republic, the pro prosecutor, he was dancing because he was so happy they're gonna they ship me <laughs> so when i say i want to go he even this even the more he said i want more one gun he was happy and then you know, i was listening from the audio and then from the audio i hear him tells to the judge okay uh, there is no more keys um, the respondent says he wants to go uh, praise the lord <laughs> he didn't say praise the lord and then the judge tells to the to the to the guy he said no no and then the guy gets angry he said no but judge you are to rule over the law you cannot become the lawyer of that man and then the judge say hold on a second so he calls me back and then he said listen you have relief according to your statutes that you can use in order to prevent them to hurt you i said hey 
I did not know that. He said, yes. And then the, pro, the prosecutor was mad. He said, but you are not a lawyer. You are not, he's an uh, uh, attorney. So why are you telling him all those things? To sample it, God did what he said he will do. And all came from the word. Sometimes you are waiting God to speak to you in a certain way. But he has already spoken in his ways. Are you following what I'm saying? You are searching sometimes in a complicated matter of the complicated algebra of the complicated. It's too. Com he has already spoken his ways. You want to know with certainty? He says you will pray, and he will listen to you. He says you will pray. You will call on him, and he will. Listen to you. Now, today is the day for you to call on the Lord. Today is the day for you to call because it says, then you will call on me and I will listen to you. Verse 13. Verse 13. Then with a deep longing, you will seek me and require me as a vital necessity. And you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Continue in verse 14. I will be found by I you. I will be found by you. Says the Lord. Says the Lord. And I will restore your fortune. And I will restore your. Fort fortunes. You know fortunes what it means? Wealth. Wealth. I will restore your fortunes and I will free you and gather you from all the nations. I will free you and gather you from all nations and and from all the places where I have driven you, mm -hmm. says the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I will bring you back to the place from where I sent you into exile. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. We will stop here. There is a day that God has already written in his book. But it is for you and I to be willing to be led in that day. I repeat again. There is a day of salvation God has written. The day of deliverance God has written. And it says that day. We not pass by. But it is for you and I to be willing and obedient to get in that place. And I know from the word of God, because the word of God is true, I know from it that whatever he says that he shall do, that he does. So he's saying right now, you will call and pray to me. And I will listen. I will hearken. And there is a result for it. He said, out of that result, I will restore your fortunes. Give me the, um, the King James, please. And I will be found of you. Go ahead. See the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, mm -hmm. and I will gather you from all the nations mm -hmm. and from all the places mm -hmm. whither I have dr driven you, said the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Hallelujah. Amen. By turning away your captivity, just like the children of Israel, by getting out of the captivity, they were restored wealth. They were restored freedom. They were restored health. They were restored the things that belong in the promises. Do not be like my cellmate. Don't be like... When it's too late and I'm already gone, <laughs> then you're going to ask, no.
because God is speaking now so that you and I may receive restoration. The Lord is speaking now so that you and I may receive restoration. You will ask, Lord, what is the thing that you want me to do? What is my purpose? What is the plans? What are the plans? You will ask, Lord, where are you sending me? What do you want me to do? He says, first, be at peace. Second, recognize the day of your visitation. Hallelujah. Your day of visitation is when the sound of what God says resonates in you. And then you can identify yourself to it. And you can see that there is in it an answer. Recognize your visitation. Be at peace. Recognize your visitation. And the third one is let me lead you. What does it mean? When God is leading you, he's leading you with this. Hallelujah. When he says, let me lead you, is when you see my will in this very testament. Make the decision to say, Lord, this is your word for me. And I will follow. And today, the word of God, he wants you to pray. Hallelujah. Simple. He wants you to pray and ask him and speak to him. He said today, he will listen. The Bible says, he asks to a man, what do you want me to do? For you. And the Messiah explaining all his trouble. The lame at the pool of Bethesda. Do you think I can help you? What do you want me to help you with? He said, ah, when I'm come, nobody here to help me. I sit here and by the time I try to get somebody else, I already jump in the pool. The question was not what 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 are your problems. <laughs> the, the question is which solution you want. Focus. So he wanted to count the litany of his problems, but the Lord says no. Your problem, I know them already. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's the reason why I came. So now that I have arrived, do not let your problem blind you. Hallelujah. Because your problem, I know them already. You've been talking to me about your problem yesterday. Before yesterday, the day before, before yesterday, the day, the day, the day before yesterday, the day before the day of the yesterday, the day before the day. I know them. <laughs> Hallelujah. But now that I say I will listen to you, you must know I'm God. I don't have time. I have to deal with Russia and Kosovo and, and China. <laughs> it's a way of saying it. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a way of saying that now that I'm here as your judge to hear your case. You have three minutes. And those three minutes, you start now listing all your problems. But you haven't asked for the solution. 
And when the three minutes are closed, you go back with your own and same problems. You don't want it today. Hallelujah. You do not want it today. You do not want it today. You do not want to go back with your same problems. You are to refuse to go back with your same, oh, Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, I refuse to go back with my same problems. For how many years the lame at the pool of Bethsaida? He was looking for help. 37, 38. He was looking for what? Help. Can you imagine? Every day, the Bible said that the people will take him and drop him. But the same people who took him from his house to drop me out of the pool, they didn't put him in the pool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they are not your resolver. So the Lord looks at your litany of problems. And he says, okay, now I have come. Tell me, what do you want me to do for you? You will say, ah. But this problem has been going on for 10 years. It has been going on for 20 years. And yeah. He knows. He knows. That's why he says, today is the day of your salvation. What do you want me to do? You need peace. You need restoration. Hallelujah. And you need to be able to discern the voice of God at all times. So that you will no longer miss what God is telling you to do right on the spot. The restoration of the years that the enemy has stolen. Listen very carefully. The restoration of the years that the enemy have stolen. I hear the Lord says, today I shall restore them. For he says, then thou shalt search me. With all thine heart. And I will make myself be found of you. There will no longer be something that will prevent you to experience the love, the grace, the help, the strength, and the peace of God. Because he says he will make himself found. And once you have found the one that you have searched for so long, then you will tell him, Lord, this is what I want you to do in my life. You want the Lord to restore your marriage? You want the Lord to restore your children? You want the Lord to heal you? You want the Lord to help you? You want the Lord to deliver you? You want the Lord to set you free? He says, today, I will listen and restore. He said, today, I will listen and restore. For the day of your trouble, the day of your trials, I've come to an end and I will listen and restore. What do you want me? to do.